559, I'm going to unmute the mic. <clears throat> Doesn't look like we can see anything on Zoom today. I'm not going to be able to see anything. Hello, everybody. <clears throat> Welcome. This meeting will be held in accordance with Executive Order N2920, issued by California Governor Gavin Newsom on March 17th, 2020, the Ralph M. Brown Act, California Government Code, Section 54950, ET Sequence, and the Federal Americans with Disabilities Act. This meeting, this meeting will not be physically open to the public. All members of the public may participate and comment via the Zoom application. Zoom meeting information was posted on the agenda. Remote public comment is also available for the city council meeting by emailing cityclerk at ci.series.ca.us by 5 p.m. date of the meeting. Include the agenda item number or public comment period in the subject line of the email. The clerk may read written comments into the record. If specifically requested to do so at the beginning of your email, your written comment will be distributed to the city council and kept on file as part of the official record of the council meeting and welcome everybody to this special city council meeting today thursday march 4th 2021 can we please uh call uh, uh get the roll call please yes city mayor Clark. council Thank member you. rhino here council member Rivera. here on it present and mayor lopez here <clears throat> there is no one else but here but us, us today so we're going to go ahead and move into the pledge of allegiance everybody <clears throat> While the City Council welcomes and encourages participation in the City Council meeting, adopted by rules, allow no more than five minutes. Resolution number 2007-106, members of the public, in public interested in addressing the City Council during this special meeting may address the items which have been described in the notice of the special meeting in accordance with the Government Code Section 54954.3a. Public comments will now be accepted through Zoom. For those participating in Zoom, please raise your hand to request to speak. Hand icon bottom of your screen. If you are participating via telephone, please press star nine on your phone. The city clerk will call your name in the order requested and received. When it's time for you to speak, the city clerk will unmute your microphone. 
City Clerk, can you please provide any names of persons that requested to speak on Zoom today? Yes, Mayor. First name is Lee Brandt. Mr. Brandt, I'll unmute your mic. Welcome, Mr. Brandt. Good evening, Council and City staff. Tonight is a very important meeting, and I would like to point out a few facts. We all know why we are here. We are here to appoint who will represent District 1. But first, I would like to point out that as of 2019, you represent 48,216 series residents. The person you appoint tonight will serve only 610 days, as opposed to the 1,460 days that you served during your four years. Should you not appoint anyone tonight, we will be without a full council for 176 days. Should this go to special election, costing the city between thirty-five and forty thousand dollars, all of which series cannot afford. If it goes to a special election, that person will serve only four hundred and thirty-four days. Is the thirty-five thousand to $40,000 worth it. Not to mention the message it sends to businesses and series residents that our council is divided and there is a good chance nothing will get done until after the special election on August 31st. We support Lori Smith 100%. I have a question for the city attorney. Should there be a re call of council members, would that be on the same ballot as the special election on August for District 1? I don't believe, practically speaking, with the timelines that that would, but I'd, we'd have to confer with the uh, registrar voters on that. Okay, thank you. I was just curious. Thank you. What else? Um, let's see, Mayor. I do not see any hands at the moment. Okay. What about emails? I did receive an email, and I'll read that into the record. The email states, Good evening, Mayor, City Council, City Staff, and Citizens of Series. I would like this to be read on March 4th by the City Clerk. My name is Sheila Brandt, and I live in District 1. I am not a Polish writer, nor do I have anyone in my court who is. I'm very concerned about myself and approximately 12,000 District 1 citizens who have gone without representation since January 4th, 2021. This is 59 days. If we have to have a special election, Mayor Lopez and Councilmember Condit, you are wanting us to wait until, let's see, early September 2021 before we will have a person in District 1, in the District 1 seat that Chance Condit vacated when he was voted into the county supervisor seat and then on November 8th, 2022, there will be a midterm election to vote for District 1. So are you suggesting that we change our city mo motto, Together We Achieve, since you are not willing to look at the full picture? I have listened to the reasons why you think we should not have an experienced individual fill that seat. If anyone has watched the Surrey City Council operate, you see how effective an individual without experience is doing. Not very well, in my opinion. So it is my understanding that you do not vote for any experienced individuals. Does that also apply when hiring police, fire, or city staff? Better to have an inexperienced person so the two of you can mold them into what you want. I get very excited when I drive down Mitchell Road and see the progress on the Super Walmart, which I am sure Mr. Westbrook knows. But it concerns me if the city will be able to attract other businesses with everything that is not getting done with the city council. I'm asking you, Mayor Lopez, and you, Council Member Condit, to think about the city you are supposed to be representing, not your own agenda, because where I stand, it looks like that's what you are doing. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Is there that's, any more emails? So one, one more hand raised. More. Okay. Um, that is Renee Ledbetter. I will promote you to panelists. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Can you hear me? Hello? 
We can hear you. Oh, okay. So I, I again, here we are. And um, I know that this council is divided and it's unfortunate that this council is divided. I think it's very frustrating to see that two of our council members feel that experience doesn't matter. And that's the message that you are putting out. Mayor, you yourself said it during the last meeting that you, uh, Mr. Silvera and Mr. Cooper are all new, inexperienced to this council and that Linda Rhino is the only experienced council member on this council. And to me, it just does not make sense when you yourself admitted that, you know, you're, you're a majority of un, inexperienced council members that you would not want to fill the seat and balance this council out with someone who has experience who has been an active person in our community by sitting on our planning commission for 14 years, who has been involved in the progress and shaping our community, who has experience in the process of city government, despite the fact that you think that that's a liability. And we are in a position, or at least we have been up until this point, where the city is finally gaining momentum. We had to wait many, many years to get to the point where the Walmart project was approved and now is making progress, progress really quickly. We are shaping our community by bringing a, a train station downtown. We're gonna be creating a unique business area with a new interchange and new business development. And it seems like we've hit a block wall all over again. And to me, it just does not make sense and it seems like unreasonable. And I, I just can't wrap my head around why you would want to spend money on a special election when you have someone who is well qualified, well experienced, and is going to be sitting in a temporary appointed position. I would really hope that you would open your ears to what the community is saying and has been saying for the past few weeks during these meetings that it does not make sense to go to a special election for a temporary appointment. If these candidates want to come back and run against Lori Smith during an actual election, a regular election, and anyone else in District 1 feels that they could do a better job, then let that happen. But in the meantime, do not stop the, the headway that we're making in this community. And if you decide to vote for a special election, all I can say is shame on you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone there's else? An, yes, there's an additional hand raised. Um, actually two. First one is Don Osgood. Mr. Osgood, I will unmute your mic. Welcome, Mr. Osgood. Mr. Osgood, I need to send a second request to unmute your mic. Yep, I, uh, I just got the notification. It was a little slow. So uh, maybe I should introduce myself as something other than a truck driver since that's the that's being downplayed in the uh, in the news media in our town. I'm also host of Forgotten Liberty Radio. I'm also a board member of Central Valley Taxpayers Association. 
although I'm not active in the series planning commission, I'm, I'm politically active in, in the community and in the state. Um, Mr. Brandt says we can, brings up a recall election. Uh, we can recall lots of, uh, of uh, council people. One a district one representative wants to recall my district four representative, I can start recalling district two and district three. Uh, it's pretty easy. I carry a big stick. Uh, here's the problem. Government's only responsibility is to provide for our adequate representation. I, I see a mayor in a, in, a, in a council district representative willing to put up monies out of their stipend to, to fund this. I see two others that, that have decent jobs that are unwilling to pay for an election. Our only responsibility in self-governance is to pay for elections before all the other additional items, police, fire, parks, this, that, and the other. When everyone speaks to Mrs. Smith's qualifications, we also have to consider what has happened on the planning commission, the advice or the guidance that's been given to previous councils. When we look at, at, at the retail with the Walmart super center going in, we're also displacing something on the other side of town, another building that will become an empty eyesore. We've, for the past 14 years in Mrs. Smith's service, which no one is willing to talk about, no one is willing to take into consideration, have added homes at the peril of our police fire, our sewer system, our water systems, our roadways, our school systems. We have added no meaningful jobs. We've lost Granger, we've lost Amazon, We've lost so many things to, to the west side of our county. We have transportation hub capability in series and retail jobs are not going to cut it. Lori Smith has been on that planning commission steering those decisions. There are gross failures coming out of the planning commission. That's not something to hang a qualification on without discussing all things pertinent to that position, let alone her position as the director of parks, recreation and neighborhood in Modesto that everybody's hanging their carrot on. She's supremely qualified. We have to look at the failures that happen in the Modesto city parks. The, the residents of Modesto are saying they cannot get help. It's on Facebook, it's easily accessible. We've contacted Parks and Rec in Modesto. We cannot get our parks secured. We cannot get our parks maintained. We cannot get our facilities in a shape where we can recreate within our own neighborhoods, parks, recreations, and neighborhoods. You just can't go to, this person is supremely qualified and not look at what is happening in the, in the areas that you're using for qualification. With that said, I've been day one, should have gone to a special election because the people of District 1 need to have the voice. If those people elect Lori Smith, because I'm positive she will run, that will be a wise, unwise choice, but it's their choice. It should not be the choice of, of Surrey City Council Member Linda Rhino, of Surrey City Council Member Brett Silvera, of city council member Cooper Condit or Mayor Lopez. An appointment process at its heart disenfranchises the voter. And every citizen of series needs to realize that. 30 to $40,000 is chump change, especially when two of your public employees that have medical benefit that don't require the $500 stipend to survive are too greedy to give it up go to the special election. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Osgood. I do not see any other hands raised, Mayor. Okay, the public comment period is now closed. Thank you, everyone. On to new business, City Council, Council District 1 vacancy. Resolution number 2021-16, appointing a member to fill the District 1 Council vacancy with the term end date of December 2022. 
Um, so, Mayor Lopez, this is just sure. a continuation of the uh, process that began on February 2nd, um, continued to the 8th of February and to the 22nd of February. Um, staff doesn't necessarily have a lot of commentary. Um, there is a resolution that has been prepared um, this evening for the council's consideration. If an appointment is done, um, then it would be the adoption of that resolution. Uh, so if there are any questions, we are certainly available to answer them. Thank you. <clears throat> we'll start off by opening the floor, whoever the council members would like to begin to speak in this matter. Nobody has any comments. I move to approve Lori Smith to fulfill the remainder of the term for District 1 of the City Council and City of Ceres. Second. May I get the roll call, please? Council Member Rhino? Yes. Council Member Silvera? Yes. Vice Mayor Condit? Nay. And Mayor Lopez? Nay. 2 2, motion fails. I'll motion that we appoint Mr. Mark White to fill the District 1 vacancy. I'll second that. Can we get a roll call, please? Council Member Rhino? No. Council Member Silvera? No. Vice Mayor Condit? Aye. And Mayor Lopez? Aye. Two, two, motion fails. I would like to make a motion that we all nominate our second choice. I'll second that. Get the roll call, please. Council Member Rhino? No. Council Member Silvera? No. Vice Mayor Condit? Aye. And Mayor Lopez? Aye. Two, two, motion fails. Make a motion to appoint Condi Vasquez. Second. Can we get the roll call? Council Member Rhino? No. Council Member Silvera? No. Vice Mayor Con. Aye. And Mayor Lopez? Aye. Two, two, motion fails. I would like to make a motion that each council person state their first choice and their second choice to fill the vacancy. I'll second that. Get the roll call, please. Council member Rhino? No. Council member Silvera? No. Vice mayor Condit? Aye. And mayor Lopez? Aye. Two, two, motion fails. Councilmember Condit. Yes, Mr. Mayor, I have a question for City Attorney, Mr. Hallinan. A constituent reached out to me and had a question regarding conflict of interest and if uh, Commissioner Smith would have any conflict of interest uh, as a council member relating to con contracts with the City of Modesto, for example. Um. 
The answer is potentially yes. Um, th there's two type of conflicts. There's the, uh, what we call the FPPC uh, conflict, the one that is usually invoked. Uh, and I think the issue there would be the, there's like three or four uh, factors to consider. I think the issue there would be materiality. And that is, it, it's kind of a math equation and you go into, uh, does the decision affect 25% of the people as much as it does her? Uh, so that, again, that one's, you'd need some facts. The other one is uh, government code section 1090. And in that situation, the uh, materiality or financial effect is smaller. It, now, if, for example, these contracts with Modesto were in place currently, then she could do what you usually do on a conflict, and that is you conflict out, you have a conflict, and then you leave the room. Uh, if you enter in any new contract, Government Code Section 1090 says that's void because that person has a direct interest that they're making the contract. And again, the materiality uh, factor there is smaller. So that's, that's a place where there could be a conflict. Thank you. City attorney, I'm sorry, I need to push my button. Oh, no worries, Councilmember Ryan, go ahead. Is, is the conflict of interest something new that relates to council members? Because I know in the past we've had Blair, Black, Blair Bradley work for the city of Modesto. We had Van Rysen, who was also a department head of the city of Modesto. And I don't ever remember all those ever having a conflict of interest or it even being questioned. And they had a position which I would assume is similar. And it could be applying that materiality factor made it not a conflict, but uh, entering into new contracts while they were council members would have been an issue. So if they were already in place, then you could recuse yourself. That would be if the materiality factor was found to cause a conflict, then you just and walk away from it. So I don't know what happened in the past on those. And it's, but and it's true that any of us have a con anything potentially that could be brought, correct? Sure. Okay, thank sure. you. Yes.
Council Member Condon. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to make another motion uh, that each council member nominate the top two candidates that they feel are best qualified to represent District 1. I'll second that motion. Get a recall, please. Council Member Rhino? No. Council Member Silvera? No. Vice Mayor Condit? Aye. And Mayor Lopez? Aye. Motion fails 2-2. Two, two. Council Member Condit. Mr. Mayor, I would like to make a motion that this council allocate the 19, over $19,000 in savings from our health care coverage that has been budgeted as of last year. And each council member donate their stipend to fund the special election. I'll second that. And get a roll call, please. Council Member Rhino? No. Council Member Silvera? No. Vice Mayor Condit? Aye. And Mayor Lopez? Aye. Motion fails 2-2. Two, two. If there's no other comments or motions, it's time to adjourn. Council member, I think the mayor 
could do that unless you want to make a motion to adjourn. You asking me, council member, to adjourn? I think we got a lot to talk about. We have an un unfunded special election that we're going to have to figure out how to pay for. And Councilman Silvera and Councilman Rhino uh, don't want to use their stipends or the savings in our city council operating budget. So I will make one more motion that we allocate the over $19,000 in savings in the city council operating budget and each council member dedicate their $500 stipend to fund the special election. I'll second that motion. The roll call, please. Council member Rhino. No. Council member Silvera. No. Vice mayor Condit. Aye. And mayor Lopez. Aye. Motion fails two two. Tom, I have a question for you. What would be the next step going into special elections? <clears throat> Two choices presented this evening <clears throat> that were similar to the um, meetings that we've had to this point are appointment to District 1. If that cannot be made, then the only other recourse is a special election. Correct. How, how would we go about the special election? What would, what would be the process? We just automatic would that be something for tom you answer we would have uh, prepare something for you and i'll defer to the city clerk on this to uh ask to have the uh county perform the special election city attorney is correct at the next meeting to bring a res i'm calling for a special election and asking uh the county registrar of voters for their services okay thank you Member Condit. Mr. Mayor, I have a question for my colleagues, uh, Councilman Silvera and Councilwoman Rhino. Uh, how would you suggest we pay for the special election? City Attorney, is that part of the agenda? It's tangentially related, I guess. But you, you know. Is it yes or no? Yes. Okay. I can give you guys some time to think about it.
So Tom, how will the uh, special election be paid? Will it become all out of general fund? Um, special elections are paid for and budgeted in the, um, the general fund. So we paid for the general election in November of, of 2020 through the general fund. Um, we budgeted 50,000. It came in a little more than 65. So we had to use some reserve to pay the rest of that. Um, this money for a special election would come through the general fund. The general fund. Thank you, Tom. Council Member Con. City Manager, do we have a general fund surplus currently? It was anticipated at the budget adoption in September of 2020 um, that with some salary savings, some infusion of some CARES Act dollars, that there would have been a surplus in this year's budget. Yes. And we also have 19, over $19,000 in savings from the city council operating budget. Since a few members did not select to take medical insurance and your open enrollment, there would be some savings. I don't know the exact amount, but there would be savings since we're not paying premiums for anyone who didn't select the medical insurance. Thank you. <clears throat> Is there any further comments by the council? Yes, Mayor, I would like to make another motion. Go ahead, sir. I move that we allocate the over $19,000 in savings in the city council operating budget and each council member donate their stipend to pay for this unfunded special election. I'll second that motion. Thank you. To roll call, please. Council Member Rhino? No. Council Member Silvera? No. Vice Mayor Condit? Aye. And Mayor Lopez? Aye. Motion fails 2 2.
Council Member Condit. Mr. Mayor, I would like to uh, ask both of my colleagues again if they've thought about another way to fund the special election. Okay, if there's any more, if there isn't any more comments, uh, we will adjourn this meeting. The next regular scheduled city council meeting will be held on March 8th, 2021 at 6 p.m.